Tonight, Australia's first coronavirus death. A 78-year-old Diamond Princess passenger loses his fight as a new threat emerges in Sydney. Bushfire devastation, two months on and no closer to relief. South Coast residents now facing more turmoil. Historic deal, the US Taliban talks that could see Australia's longest running battle come to an end. Vile threat, Sun Yang fans attack Mac Horton online with a fellow Aussie athlete coming to his defence. The new program helping Sydney seniors get active and stay social. And Bunny Split South stunning comeback to beat the Dragons in the Charity Shield. Live from our Sydney headquarters, this is 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. Australia has recorded its first death from coronavirus. The victim had been on the Diamond Princess cruise ship. The news came as New South Wales confirmed its fifth case, while another man is suspected of being at risk, forcing several others into quarantine. The 78-year-old and his wife contracted coronavirus on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. They arrived in Perth on Friday and he passed away overnight. His wife remained stable um, in hospital. She's obviously, um, she had the opportunity to obviously talk to him prior to his death. In Sydney, a man in his 40s is in the isolation unit at Westmead Hospital. He is the fifth confirmed case of coronavirus in New South Wales. Along with two people he came into contact with and another four who were quarantined in the community. Another 50-year-old man who also travelled from Iran is being tested as the contagion continues to spread across the globe. This has spread to 61 countries outside of China, so there's a very serious development. Shoppers reported a rise in panic buying. As medical experts say, within two weeks to two months, the virus will take hold here. Stocking up, has that crossed your mind? That's my mind a lot, yeah. We use a lot of Asian products and stuff, so yeah, it's a bit worried. Some experts predict up to half the Australian population could be infected. This is a reality check for every government on the planet. Wake up, get ready. Other high-risk countries include Japan, South Korea, Italy and Mongolia. Officials urging anyone who has travelled from or through those areas and is feeling unwell to isolate themselves at home and arrange to be tested as soon as possible. The United States recorded its first death from coronavirus. We would respectfully ask the media and politicians and everybody else involved not do anything to incite a panic because there's no reason to panic. There are now more than 85,000 cases globally. Nearly 3,000 people have died. Brian Seymour, 7 News. South Coast residents caught up in the tragic bushfires are facing more turmoil, with some being told they'll need to get out of their replacement accommodation over Easter. They're also concerned money will run out before they can rebuild and fear further stress with counselling services about to be cut back. On New Year's Eve, as a huge fire front bore down, Kim Harper was told to leave her home and seek shelter. Two months on, she's been given the same instructions. We have to move into another place for three weeks and then we have to move into a, this will be the fourth place. From May onwards, we don't know where we'll be yet. While the house still stands, it's too unsafe for her family, including her elderly mother, to return. It's a big panic because where do you take your family? Where do you sleep? One of many at Lake Conjola once again facing the prospect of being homeless. Peter Dunn, who heads up the volunteer relief effort here, says some people are being forced to leave their temporary housing over Easter. We are aware that several in this area have been told that and this is because of uh, pre-existing bookings. From holiday makers heading south, prepared to pay much more. While Easter dawns for some, a Christmas deadline is looming for others. Amy Dawes and her family need 300000 to rebuild, but the bank will only lend them half. Plus, their insurance policy runs out in December. We'll probably end up living in a caravan so we can actually afford the rebuild. To the people of Lake Conjola, financial assistance is very important, but so too is assistance for their mental health. But they've now been told that as of next week, free counselling services will be scaled back. This trying to return to normal uh, is, is far too early. I think they'll have suicides because people can't cope. Mark, the major issue hampering the rebuild effort here is this stuff, asbestos. Uh, residents here can't start construction on their new homes until it's all been taken away and stored safely. They've continuously been told by both council and government that that process will commence shortly, 
but two months on and still nothing and the clock is ticking because most people here only have temporary accommodation to last them 12 months. The rebuild phase could take anywhere from 18 months, even two years to complete. Mark? Peter Feagan in Lake Conjola, thank you. With Warragamba still filling, water restrictions have been rolled back to level one from today. And while most of the state is still gripped by drought, parts of Sydney and the coast have undergone a real transformation. Striking green fields and brimming dams. Not England, but Western Sydney, where the Prospect Reservoir is almost full and Warragamba Dam is at 82% capacity. In December, it was almost half that, but the big summer downpour has kept the runoff coming. It's a relief for Sydney, but we're still in drought in western New South Wales. After dust storms and bushfire smoke, 12 weeks of restrictions have taken their toll. But now it's legal again to use the hose on the car at home. The beast has been, been quite dirty, so it's um, yeah, good, to, good to get it out. Besides being allowed to wash the car with a trigger hose, level one restrictions mean you can also water your garden with a trigger hose or watering can before 10am and after 4. Sprinklers are still banned. You can't hose hard surfaces unless there is an emergency or for health and safety reasons. Water restrictions have been working just three years ago. Sydney side has used an average of 200 litres of water every day. That number has now dropped to 180 litres. That's a saving of 100 million litres of water every day. If you break the rules, there's a $220 fine for households, $550 for businesses. Samantha Brett, 7 News. A woman has been seriously injured in a head-on crash at Luddenham in, city, in the city's west. The two cars collided on the northern road just after four o'clock this afternoon. The woman in her 20s was cut free after being trapped. Her car nearly sliced in half. She was taken to hospital. The other driver is assisting police. A wild night at a Western Sydney pub left a police officer with a broken nose and a group of men subdued with capsicum spray. It's alleged the men refused to leave the hotel, with the situation turning volatile when officers showed up. It was a drunken night of mayhem that finished with a visit to a police cell. Police say one of you guys punched one of them. The group of four is alleged to have been drinking at the General Burke Hotel in Parramatta before being asked to leave around 8.30 last night. But police say they got rowdy, refusing to call it a night. Why didn't you leave the pub when you were told? Because I was waiting on you. You're waiting for me? That's when police say things escalated. One of the men allegedly gave an officer a bear hug before another punched a sergeant to the face, breaking his nose. Officers needed to use capsicum spray to restrain the group before eventually getting cuffs on all four. The behaviour of these particular individuals um, was atrocious. The men were charged with a slew of offences, 30 in total, the most serious of which, assaulting a police officer. They were given police bail and they'll be before a magistrate here in Parramatta next month. It's unwarranted, it's unnecessary uh, and it's a mix of alcohol and violence and it's unacceptable to New South Wales Police. Laura Banks, 7 News. It's our nation's longest lasting conflict that has claimed the lives of 41 Australian soldiers. But tonight there are hopes it could be the beginning of the end for the war in Afghanistan. An agreement between the US and Taliban means all remaining Allied troops could be home by mid next year. Bitter enemies since September 11, two decades later, the US and the Taliban have done a deal. It follows a year of mostly secret talks as America looked for a way out of its longest war, invading Afghanistan with Australian support after the 2001 terrorist attacks to overthrow the Taliban regime, which had given sanctuary to Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Had tremendous success in Afghanistan in the killing of terrorists, but it's time after all these years to go and to bring our people back home. The U.S. will pull out around 5,000 troops. Uh, like uh, today, OK? Today, they'll start immediately. In exchange for the Taliban stopping al-Qaeda, ISIS or any terror group using the country as a launch pad for attacks. Oh! 
and working to share power with the Afghan government. If the Taliban play ball, the remaining 8,000 American and NATO troops will go in just over a year. Australia still has around 200 personnel there as part of NATO's mission. It's been an incredibly important effort and uh, if there are troop withdrawals, and we'll work that out with the United States. After a conflict that's cost tens of thousands of lives and $2 trillion, critics warn it is a path to peace, but with plenty of obstacles. If bad things happen, we'll go back. I let the people know we'll go back, and we'll go back so fast. In the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. The grace period is over for anyone using their mobile phone behind the wheel. From today, steep fines and demerit points apply to those caught by new high-tech cameras. And if you think you can beat the system, think again. The camera locations won't be made public. A truck driver with both feet on the dash, one hand on the wheel the other on his phone. A catastrophe waiting to happen. He's just one of more than 31,000 drivers caught in the past three months. 31,000 people illegally holding their mobile phones while they're driving on roads between 70 and 100 kilometres an hour is just ridiculous, it's dangerous and reckless. So far, offenders have been given a warning. But from today, it'll cost them five demerit points, 10 during a double demerits period, and a $344 fine, $457 in a school zone. It's like driving when you're drunk, and that's really dangerous. Right now, 13 cameras are nabbing drivers across the state. Some are fixed, others are portable. Today, this one was scanning cars on the M4 at Prospect, but it'll soon be moved. The system relies on artificial intelligence. The government hopes people will rely on their own intelligence and just stop doing it. It's not your lounge room. You're actually in control of a motor vehicle. The government plans to roll out 45 cameras across the state by 2023. Unlike speed cameras, there's no warning for drivers. Angela Cox, 7 News. A heavily pregnant woman has been taken to hospital after two cars collided near Penrith just before 11 this morning. Three children in the second car, aged 10, 11 and 12, were checked at the scene with two of them taken to hospital. A 58-year-old male driver was also transported for treatment. All patients, including the 25-year-old pregnant woman, are now in a stable condition. Olympic champion Mac Horton has received death threats from supporters of banned drug cheat Sun Yang. Trolls are targeting the swimmer who has now received support from fellow athlete Andrew Bogut, who has himself been a target. With his huge frame and bold personality, Andrew Bogut can be a big target. He now finds himself alongside Mac Horton in the sights of the supporters of drug cheat Sun Yang. It was good news for me yesterday. I uh, had a little smile about it. Christmas came early, so I had a little bit of fun with it on Twitter. And now the death threats and all that kind of stuff started again. The tirade was sparked by the Boomers and Sydney King Centre having his say on Twitter over the eight-year ban handed to Sun Yang. He's keeping a cool head. It's nothing against China or Sun Yang, but I, I, I made a... You know, flippant comment about it um, six months ago, a sarcastic joke about it, and, and got death threats for it while I was in China. Mac Horton has been trolled online since news of Sun Yang's ban. He's also received death threats. Trolls have targeted his mother, and Horton has been labelled a dog who will never be a champion. The name game still lingers for Caulfield Grammar's Aquatic Centre. Andrew Bogut has thrown his support behind the push for the school to honour Mac Horton. I believe it should be renamed after him, and they got to deal with the consequences of losing a bit of money from China. Unlucky, I think it's the right thing to do. The three-time Olympian won't be deterred from his campaign for Tokyo. He believes the biggest victims of Sun Yang are the people he swam against and cost greater honours. I'm strongly against drugs and sports, so um, I think it's the right result. Cameron Bow, 7 News. China, Iran and Russia have all been named as countries with spies working in Australia. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton has addressed the threat as the federal government looks to overhaul powers for our security agencies to detain and question foreign agents. It sounds like a Cold War relic. The first details of a Soviet spy ring in Australia. Vladimir Petrov. Spies in Canberra. In fact, the Director General of Intelligence says there are more now than back then, and MPs have no doubt which foreign power he's referring to. China. 
So you've been forthright. China, China. China. Well, they're not just from China, but they're from Iran, from Russia. Are they mostly from China? And from from elsewhere. Iran and Russia added to the espionage list as the Morrison government considers extending some anti-terror laws so intelligence agencies can also detain and question suspected spies. If ASIO suggests that uh, there is a case to be made, we'd be happy to to look at that. Parliament's Intelligence and Security Committee has already suggested changes. One power to hold terror suspects for up to a week could be done away with as the focus of the law shifts to take in spies. The opposition appears to be on board. We will always seek to work first and foremost in a bipartisan manner. As MPs head for another sitting week, Prime Minister Morrison will address a national summit on plastics pollution. Seven News understands he'll declare recycling as a consideration in Commonwealth purchases. Also announce incentive funding for industry to set up recycling. Tim Lester, Seven News. A stolen puppy has been reunited with its worried owners after being taken from her Newcastle home last week. 11-week-old Athena was recognised from social media posts and spotted near Lake Macquarie. Police have charged a 34-year-old man over the theft. It's a family that owns the dog, uh, including a couple of young boys, and uh, they were very happy uh, to see their dog back. The accused dog napper will face court next week. Twice married and a father of at least five children, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson isn't letting the top job stop him from starting another family. His girlfriend has announced they're engaged and expecting a baby, but the timing of the news is raising plenty of eyebrows. Arriving at number 10 after Britain's December election, Carrie Simmons was Boris Johnson's girlfriend. An unprecedented prime ministerial arrangement, but soon she'll be his wife and a mother too. The announcement was made on the 31-year-old's Instagram page, releasing this photo saying they have a baby hatching early in the British summer, feeling incredibly blessed. Boris Johnson's been married twice before. His divorce from barrister Marina Wheeler was settled just 11 days ago. But there's been alleged affairs too, prompting questions like this during the election campaign. How many children do you have? Look, I, am, I love I have to ask my question, children very much, but they are, not, are they are not standing at this election. Notoriously protective of his private life, Mr Johnson will, it seems, become a father again. There have been babies in Downing Street before. Tony Blair and David Cameron welcomed children while living there, but Boris Johnson will become the first British leader to be married in office in 250 years. Carrie Simmons, a former party spin doctor, 24 years his junior. The engagement happened late last year and was announced on a day of bad headlines for the Tory government. A senior public servant quit accusing the Home Secretary of bullying. There are eyebrows being raised at the timing of this announcement, but let's not forget this is a woman having her first baby and who would begrudge her that joy. Now, Sunday's front pages have made way for news of wedding bells for Boris and his bride. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Time now for a check on our weather. Here's Brownie. Yes, thanks very much, Fergo. Well, it's been a top day, hot tomorrow, showers and storms to follow. Now, look, here, let's have a look at today's temperature profile, shall we? Warm in the city, in fact, uh, 28 degrees, a little bit warmer in our west. You'll notice the maximum there was 34 degrees in Penrith. Now, we're expecting a hot day throughout tomorrow, but eventually a mix of showers and thunderstorms will start to roll through. It all starts Tuesday, with uh, more to follow for the remainder of the uh, working week, and we're expecting some good totals to unfold as well. It's worth noting the green indicates falls of around 25 to 50 millimetres. But right now the sky is clear across the Sydney Basin. We're sitting on 31 degrees in Camden, Liverpool 28 degrees, Parramatta 29. Local forecast, top of the hour, Fergo. OK, David, thank you. A man has survived after his heart stopped for an hour and a half. Up next, how he lived to tell the tale and baffle his doctors. A vicious stabbing on Oxford Street just metres from Mardi Gras celebrations. Hong Kong in turmoil once again. Coronavirus fears had protests on hold, so why have they returned? Also, Oprah's tumble, the TV queen, has a fall while talking about balance. And soon in sport, one of the greatest catches in Test cricket, incredible leap of faith. Welcome back. Police are hunting an attacker after a man was stabbed in Darlinghurst this morning. The victim was set upon, suffering multiple stab wounds on Oxford Street around 7 o'clock. 
He was taken to St Vincent's Hospital in a serious but stable condition. While the attack occurred along the Mardi Gras parade route, police say it was not related to the event. A man has stunned doctors by coming back to life after his heart stopped for a full 90 minutes. Cardiologists say he was as good as dead, but now he's in good health with a new lease on life. Today, Alistair Blake is the picture of health. This time last year, he was seconds from death. His wife watching helplessly as paramedics worked to save him. The police took me out to the other room to say, look, they've worked a really long time and there's nothing. Melinda and Alistair were staying at their beach house when she woke to what she thought was her husband snoring. She soon realised he was having a cardiac arrest. I had to roll him over and... And, you know, she said start CPR. Melinda performed CPR before paramedics arrived. Alistair was medically dead for 90 minutes before his heart began to beat again. You know, 90 minutes downtime, we'd expect to see some permanent disabilities. The accountant spent four days in intensive care. When he woke, doctors were stunned to see no signs of any physical or mental damage. They fitted him with a pacemaker and he was discharged from hospital three weeks later. Mr Blake's story is so remarkably rare, his doctors have given him the nickname Lazarus. Well, I think it's uh, quite appropriate, even though I had to look it up when, after it was first mentioned to me. <laughs> now the 59-year-old granddad is back doing what he does best, living life to the fullest. Each day's a bonus and you just look at it and it's like, at the other side of that, try and live life as normal as possible. Georgia Common Solely, 7 News. Joe Biden achieved a much needed boost to his struggling campaign in the South Carolina primary today. The former vice president still has ground to cover, but the win, buoyed by support from African-American voters, keeps him well in the race. And we will win the presidency. We will win the presidency and we'll defeat Donald Trump. But Bernie Sanders is still leading the Democrat race to take on President Trump, pulling into the lead after strong showings in the first three primary contests. Chaos has erupted on the streets of Hong Kong again following a period of relative calm. Armed police fired tear gas to disperse hundreds of black-clad protesters, even tackling some to the ground. Coronavirus fears have been keeping people indoors, but this latest wave of riots has plunged the city into turmoil once again. Oprah has had an unfortunate misstep taking a tumble while talking at a wellness conference about balance. And balance doesn't mean all things are equal or at peace at all times. <laughs> True to form, the TV queen picked herself up and kicked off her high heels to wild applause, later joking. It's nice to be talking about balance and fall. <laughs> Star recruit Latrell Mitchell showed enough against the Dragons last night to suggest he'll be a key to South Sydney's prospects this season. Jim Wilson is here and Jim, the Bunnies staged a great comeback. Yeah, they did, Fergo. Good evening to you. Evening, everyone. The Rabbitohs turn it on an explosive 15 minutes to come from 12-4 down to beat the Dragons in their Charity Shield showdown. Very soon in sport, Latrell plays a part. And we've got highlights from Mudgy. Plus, we go round the grounds on what's been a huge weekend of trials, including a big injury news at the West Tigers. Also coming up in sport, the Aussies outplayed by South Africa. And what a catch in the Kiwis-India Test match in Christchurch. And we've seen some freakish goals in the A-League. We've got a couple of absolute gems to save it very shortly between the A-League and the cricket. A couple for the highlights reel. A few in form. Freakish. Good on you, Jim. Thanks, Virgo. There's a migrant crisis unfolding on Europe's doorstep next. The panic and tear gas on the Greek border. Plus, our Olympians roll up their sleeves for Clean Up Australia Day frightening crash the moment a motorcyclist collided with a van you'll be surprised at what happened next and students at a bushfire ravaged school thank some french friends who gave them a helping hand that's it. Welcome back. There's a migrant crisis unfolding tonight on Europe's doorstep. Thousands of people are trying to enter Greece after being told by Turkey's president they could leave. Instead, they were met by force. Panic as migrants attempt to bust through barbed wire border fences. They succeed, but are met by Greek border guards holding firm using tear gas. Now, hundreds are in no man's land, many of them Syrians and Afghans, right on Europe's doorstep. The border is open, but it's one-sided. It's only the Turkish border is open. 
The other side is closed. They're pawns in a geopolitical game. The Turkish government bust them to the border from Istanbul, a deliberate effort by President Erdogan to pressure Europe into helping his nation in Syria, where 33 Turkish soldiers died in an attack this week. Turkey has hosted millions of migrants and refugees for years. Now it's keen to show Turkey's problems can be Europe's too. Turkey is pushing them and using them, this Greek government minister says. Greece has borders, Europe has borders and we will guard them. But many are slipping through. More boats are arriving on the Greek islands, some are crossing rivers. Turkey is sending a signal it can cause a repeat of the 2015 migrant crisis here if it wants to. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Dashcam video has caught the frightening moment a motorbike rider crashed into a van in Adelaide. The man is seen sliding along the road after smashing into the side of the turning vehicle. Fortunately, the rider escaped serious injury, walking away with only a broken wrist. Hundreds of thousands of people have given up their Sunday to collect rubbish from beaches, parks and roadsides, part of the 30th annual Clean Up Australia event. And they had a helping hand from some of our Olympic hopefuls. They'd normally be at water polo training ahead of the Olympic Games, but these players have gloved up to pick up trash in their local community. If you really like dig your fingers in and have a look, there's little bits of rubbish that you walk past every day and don't notice. Joining 700,000 volunteers to clean up Australia. We live in such a beautiful country and, you know, to give something back, even though it's a, it's a one hour or two hours out of your day. A collective 16,500 tonnes of rubbish is estimated to have been bin today. The majority of it coming out of our waterways. Pizza boxes, coffee, plastic everywhere. Way too much rubbish in our world and we just need to clean it up. That was the passion of the late Ian Kiernan, who started this National Day 30 years ago. Dad would be really proud today that so many Australians are still getting out there. But it's a 365 day waste challenge with estimates there'll be more plastic in the water than fish by 2050. And Australians are frustrated about the amount of um, waste and plastics that we are creating. We just can't let this keep going. We are intervening at every single level to take plastic out of our environment. Days like this are just a start. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. It triggered an election debate over development and threatened to drag the Premier into court, but now the state government has quietly lifted a planning freeze which blocked Ameriton development at Macquarie Park. It means the way has been cleared for the towers to go ahead. French school children have brought a little bit of joy to some young Aussies doing it tough after the bushfire tragedy. The kids from Fromel wrote to their buddies in Victoria, honouring a bond that goes way back to World War I. At their temporary school, you have a look at these kids. Okay. morale boosting letters for the Clifton Creek kids from far flung French friends. I'm a pupil of the Fromel's Cobber School in France. My name is Maxine. Love from France. Messages of support with koalas and kangaroos after their school was destroyed. Our thoughts are with you. We hope your school will be rebuilt soon. All because of a bond forged 104 years ago. Over the top into a world of bullets, smoke and flame. The first when thousands of young Aussie soldiers were killed at Fromel, among them William Fitton, born at Clifton Creek. So to honour him, these French students wrote their letters to his hometown. And that's why the connection exists between your school and the Fromel school. Fitton's descendants delighted at this unique memorial. I'm sort of lost for words in a way. It's just too much. It, it, it gets to my heart. The Fromel letters will feature on the walls of the portable classrooms when they move back to their old school next month. Nearly every single country is trying to help us. How does that make you feel? So happy. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Sydney researchers have made a discovery about a common misdiagnosis. Next, new hope for women who've been told they can never get pregnant. Plus, memorabilia from the Firefight Australia concert up for auction. Mardi Gras revelers praised by police after a colourful night in Sydney CBD. Stunning today, hot tomorrow, but the rains are coming.
Welcome back. Memorabilia from the Firefight Australia concert is up for sale on eBay. Superstar artists signed two guitars played during the show, which raised more than $10 million for bushfire relief. Proceeds from the auction will go to the RSPCA Wildlife Fund. The concert is being broadcast in the US on the Fox network as we go to air tonight. Police have praised partygoers after last night's Mardi Gras celebrations. Over 12,000 people took part in the parade, with 300,000 more partying throughout Sydney streets. But not everyone was on their best behaviour. 13 people were arrested and three were removed after entering the parade route. Being told you may not be able to have children can be devastating news. Now, Sydney researchers believe many women are being diagnosed with a common disorder linked to infertility when they may be perfectly healthy. When Nicole Liu was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, it came with another dire prediction. I was told by this GP that I would be potentially infertile. Getting told that I couldn't have kids was a real shock to like, everything I believed in. Then a gynaecologist said she'd been wrongly diagnosed. I'm definitely very relieved off the back of that. PCOS affects one in six Australian women. Common symptoms include cysts in the ovaries, skipped or irregular periods and high levels of male hormone. New research from the University of Sydney finds many are being misdiagnosed and those who do have it may not struggle to fall pregnant. It can be extremely um, distressing to hear that you might have reduced fertility um, and kind of con cause long-lasting anxiety. This study provides new hope for many women who want to start a family that it may not actually be out of reach. The first step is getting the right advice. Even if it might take a little bit longer or they might need a little bit of medical assistance to help them ovulate when they're ready to have a baby, um, in the end most women will end up with a desired family size. Now Nicole's helping others with her website, Kin. Give women better information to help them take control about their fertility and reproductive health. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. When it comes to keeping up a social life, age really is just a number. It can often be tricky for older people to make new connections. But now there's a way to stay fit and healthy while making friends. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. But now Jim is back with sport and not even some Steve Smith magic could save the Aussies. That's right, Fergo. Coming up, Smith showed some fight, but the Aussies had a stunning batting collapse. Also that screamer of a catch in New Zealand. Plus, Josh Reynolds back for the West Tigers, but there was an injury scare for the skipper. And the incredible streak comes to an end for Liverpool in a huge boil over in the Premier League. That's next. Welcome back everyone. Rabbitoh star recruit Latrell Mitchell has helped Souths continue their recent domination of the Dragons in the Charity Shield. The Red V started well enough and led 12 points to four, but then four unanswered tries got the Bunnies home 26 points to 12. While there was an injury scare for the West Tigers as they beat the Warriors. It took less than a minute for Latrell Mitchell to register his first try assist as a Rabbitoh. It's Campbell Grime. He's on. Fantastic pass from Latrell Mitchell. But it was far from smooth sailing for Latrell and the Bunnies, who went to the break eight points down. The Dragons, real signs of encouragement. It was a vastly different story in the second 40 at Mudgee's Glen Willow Stadium. With both teams playing their youngsters, South scored four unanswered tries in 15 minutes. The final score was 26 to 12. Souths haven't been beaten in the Charity Shield since 2012. Both sides are adamant there'll be much more polished come round one. Our attack, especially our good ball attack, was a little bit clunky too. So um, I guess that's what that's what trials are for. Um, getting all the mistakes out of the way early. The West Tigers have a key injury concern 11 days out from the season opener. Captain Moses Embai limped off with a knee injury early in this afternoon's game against the Warriors in Rotorua. Josh Reynolds burrowed over from dummy half and halfback Luke Brooks showed his class. Well, Brooks chases through. He's going to score. That's brilliant from Luke Brooks. Joey Leilua gave fans a glimpse of just how destructive he can be on the right edge as the Tigers came from behind to win 20-6. Space behind the line, Joseph Leilua, and not for Luma. That's great centres play there. From I suppose on the positive, positive note, um, the boys hung in there, dug deep, and uh, I thought we played the type of footy we wanted to play in the second half. In Port Macquarie yesterday, the Raiders edged out the Bulldogs 
Tarpany, great ball, right and out of the post. Kalen Ponger and Mitchell Pearce had a field day in Gosford as the Knights carved up a second string Roosters outfit 58 nil. Centering kick, perfect for Ponger. And worrying signs for Anthony Seabold's Broncos. They led last year's wooden spoon as the Titans 16 nil, but went down 28 to 22. Nick Markham, 7 News. Cameron Smith says critics who are tipping the storm to slide down the ladder in 2020 are in for a rude shock. It's a very different looking Melbourne side this year after the departures of Curtis Scott, Will Chambers, Brodie Croft and a host of others. But Smith told fans at their season launch today that expectations remain high. Looking at you know, the squad and the makeup of it at the moment, we've got some really good young players coming through. We should be in for another good season and hopefully we're very competitive again. The storm take on Manly at Brookvale in round one. Australia copped a 74-run hiding from South Africa in the one-day series opener. Heinrich Klaassen's unbeaten 123 guided the Proteas to 7 for 291 in Pal. Pat Cummins snared three wickets along with a brilliant run out. Oh, hurry, 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 gone. You can hurry back. Superb run out by Cummins. Steve Smith scored 76 as the Aussies reached 3 for 174 in reply before the fall of Mitchell Marsh sparked a nightmare collapse of six for 43. Got him! Ha <laughs> Lungi and Gini. A few guys have been a little bit crook um, the last couple of days, but uh, that's again, that's no excuse whatsoever. The smoke from a nearby bushfire provided eerie parallels to our home summer. And Elise Perry is in doubt for Australia's knockout group game against New Zealand at the T20 World Cup in Melbourne tomorrow. The star all-rounder set out training today with a hip injury. Outfield catches don't get any better than this effort from Ravi Jadeja in Christchurch. Unbelievable. Quite incredible. <laughs> Quite possibly one of the greatest outfield catches in the history of the game. This will live long in your memory, folks, if you love the game. Stunning. Jadeja's amazing one-handed grab came on day two of the second test between India and New Zealand. Now, Neil Wagner was the unlucky victim. He couldn't believe he had to go, and quite frankly... Who can blame him? It was a freakish effort. One of the goals of the A-League season from former soccer Andrew Naboot breathed new life into Melbourne Victory's finals hopes at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne last night. The stoppage time strike clinched a 2-1 win over Adelaide, moving the victory to within six points of the top six. The goal came just hours after Nikolai Topol Stanley's screamer in the Jets' 2-1 win over Perth in Newcastle. Liverpool's dream of an unbeaten Premier League campaign was dashed this morning. The runaway league leaders considered three second-half goals in 18 minutes at Watford as the Hornets climbed out of the relegation zone with a famous victory. So I can't get a shot away. Just beating the would-be champions, they are pulling away! The loss ends the Reds' unbeaten run at 44 matches and 422 days. The Giants are headed towards their second defeat of the AFL women's season. They trail the Lions by 28 points late in the fourth quarter of their clash at Hickey Park in Brisbane. A heavy defeat could cost the Giants a spot in the top three of their conference. Sydney's Cameron Davis is five shots from the lead after three rounds of the Honda Classic in Florida. Grayson Murray was pumped, and so was the crowd after his ace at the par three seven. They can take that aim, just like that. Oh, my gosh. oh Grayson Murray! Oh, you gotta love it. I I'd like to see the beer showering down on him or something. You know, <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Let it flow. An impressive tee shot to the par three fifteenth from Tom Lewis didn't seem to bother some local ducks who are casually strolling past the flagstick. There you go. The Sydney Kings pulled off one of their greatest ever comebacks to take a 1-0 lead in their NBL semi-final series against Melbourne United. The minor premiers trailed by 16 points with less than seven minutes to play at home last night before going on a 24-2 run. Import Jay Sean Tate starred with 23 points, but he wasn't alone. It's Luzana, the 20-year-old, the fake to fall the Kings won 86 to 80. United must win game two in Melbourne tomorrow night to keep the series alive. And the perfect farewell for legendary Australia Diamonds coach Lisa Alexander in this afternoon's bushfire relief fundraiser in Sydney. The Diamonds turned it on in front of a vocal crowd beating the All Stars. Waits to bring the house down, and she does. 
The Diamonds winning 66 to 53 and a brilliant end for the coach and champion player Caitlin Thwaites. Well done to Lisa, the best in the business. Caitlin Thwaites, 55 internationals. Now, let's go. It's been a good debate in the office, this one. Is this the best catch of all time? Jadeja this afternoon in Christchurch, Fergo. Pretty good, isn't it? Amazing. Amazing my... height. The ball yeah. is travelling. Now, my favourite, still top of the pops, John Dyson off Sylvester yeah. Clark in the 80s yeah. at the yeah. SCG, yeah. Fergo. I remember it very well. <laughs> the heart says Dyson, but <laughs> the head tells me there's probably been a few better since then. Uh, hang time, heading back, deep mid-wicket. I'm going to stick with John Dyson. I'd never seen anything like it at the time, but maybe there's one or two better now. Yeah, maybe. The debate continues. Let it go on. Thank you, Jim. OK. Ageing doesn't have to mean your social life is affected. Seniors right across Sydney are proving age is just a number when it comes to keeping busy. Now the state government wants to boost programs that help seniors build connections while staying fit and healthy. At a pavilion in the inner west, this group is proving you're never too old to learn new tricks. I didn't really want to go at start when I first came here. But now I enjoy it so much, I'm back every week. Here, age does matter. You're a star. See you moment. But it doesn't have to slow you down. My knee is very bad, but I like dancing. The line dancing class is aimed at keeping seniors physically and mentally fit. So you're coordinating and stopping dementia. But the main focus, friendship protecting them from social isolation. You go and have coffee in that afterwards and, and it becomes your line dancing family. It's one of many activities on offer across the city. It's always fantastic. The bold and the beautiful swim at Manly, a fitness and social event. It's not all blokey, which is, which is good, you know, it's a mix. Well, it's easy to see the benefits of a program like this just by coming along. It's clear these guys absolutely love their time here. It's open to all seniors and the best part, it's free. The only problem, there's not enough programs like it. The government is now investing $600,000 to start new programs and grow existing ones. We want to have more programs like this to get seniors involved with their community, get them out and about, get them active. Groups can apply for grants from $3,000 up to 100000 For information on how to apply, head to our website. Miley Hogan, 7 News. David is back now with the latest forecast. Brownie, how's the new working week shaping up? Hot tomorrow, Fergo, but there is a cool change closing fast. Those details straight after the break. Checking your food's perfect from the inside out. High-tech testing for safety and flavour. The Consumer Investigation, 7 News, Monday. Tonight's 7 News headlines, the family of Australia's first coronavirus victim says he died peacefully as another case is confirmed here in New South Wales. Residents caught up in the South Coast bushfires are facing more turmoil as funding dries up. The US strikes a deal that could see Australian troops withdrawn from Afghanistan. And Andrew Bogan is now offering support to Mac Horton as the swim star deals with vile threats online. Now the latest on Sydney's weather, here's David. Thanks very much, Fergo, and good evening. Yes, it's a beautiful evening to be out and about. Hot tomorrow, showers and storms to follow on Tuesday. Now today's high, very comfortable indeed. 28 degrees, that was soon after 2 o'clock this afternoon, following an overnight low there of 19. You'll notice it was a warmer day inland under this uh, northeasterly airstream. In fact, uh, mid-30s in the outer west. Now, as we go to the satellite, we're keeping an eye on that change that's approaching from the uh, west. Yes, atmospheric pressure is now starting to fall across our state. This complex frontal system will start to draw some very hot air from the interior all the way towards the coast tomorrow, ahead of this dry southerly change. But in the longer term, the rains are coming. We'll see a mixture of monsoonal moisture, driving showers and thunderstorms right through until Friday. Check out the totals. The green highlights something like 25 to 50 millimetres. Of course, that's great news for our farmers. Nationwide tomorrow, Brisbane. Sunny weather is on the way in a forecast top of 33 degrees. Melbourne, on the other side of that change, it's cool. 18 degrees at best with some showers uh, sweeping through. And you'll notice some uh, showers starting to move into the Alice. 30 degrees, that's all part of that monsoonal moisture that's making its way from the Kimberley through the interior and eventually into our state. Now, a strong wind warning covers the southern half of the coast tomorrow for this southerly surge. There it goes, powering all the way up towards the uh, Hunter. It will be a fine and generally sunny day, apart from some isolated instability to the north. This should spark a few showers and thunderstorms. Most of that action happening during the afternoon. Back home, hot and sunny tomorrow. Here's the forecast for your Monday. Yep, 
mid 30s for most of the uh, metro area but a cool and gusty southerly change should arrive somewhere between two and four o'clock in the afternoon in fact that southerly should power through to around about 20 to 30 knots over our coastal waters and of course with winds like that we'll see rough seas developing for the city hot early a sunny top of 36 degrees ahead of that uh, gusty cool change that should reach the city by early to mid afternoon as for the next seven days let's go to the outlook we'll see some rain developing during Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday and Thursday, very unstable. A mixture of showers and passing thunderstorms, potentially some very big falls. But as for Friday, just a few passing showers and more showers to take us into next weekend. So hot and windy tomorrow, but the rains are coming again. Jim and Fergo. Looking forward to it once again. Thank you, Brownie. That is Seven News for this Sunday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a great night.